Hi there, welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this flyer. So if you're ready and excited like I am, let's get started. If you're new to this channel, my name is Trish. Welcome. And please take a minute, like, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for all future uploads. This canvas size is an 8 by 12. So the first thing that we are going to do is to bring in our subject. So I'm going to pull our subject in. And just so you know, I'm going to make these images available with a link in the description below. You can download and follow along. And you can also tag me on Instagram or Facebook when you create your version of this flyer. So I can see that my students are learning and progressing. Okay, so we are going to click on this image and I'm just going to drop it and release it into our working file. I'm going to double click to accept. And then the quickest way to take off the background is to go to your quick selection tool. And then you want to make sure your layer is selected. And then we are going to click on select subject. And Photoshop is going to generate an outline for us. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see um, what selection has been made for us. Um, I want to add a little bit of the hair strand. So I'm going to click on my lasso tool and I'm going to click on add to selection. And I'm going to gradually just trace around this area so I can include this area of the hair. So this is just a little cleanup and th this is, I want to make it look so real. So I'm just trying to add a little bit more. I'm going to zoom out and then this looks good. I'm not going to include that piece. And I want to include this entire area of the earring. So I'm going to just select all of that and make sure that is included. I'm going to zoom out and I'm good with the selection. I'm going to cut out this little P. So I'm going to click on subtract to selection and I'm just going to do that. So now that we have our selection, we are going to click on our layer max icon so the background is taken for us. And as you zoom in, you see that we get a very good selection. And I really like this. So the next thing we're going to do is to change our background color. And I'm going to go for a more of a grayish color, something like this. I'm going to zoom in. The color is too light. So I'm going to go for a little bit more deeper color. So I get a little bit of a contrast between um, the background and the color of her shirt. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to select my subject and rescale. I'm going to set it right there. I'm going to double click to deselect. And now I'm going to erase a portion of my subject. I always like to make a copy of my original. I'm going to take my eraser tool and I'm going to begin to erase, but you always want to make sure your hardness is at zero and you have a big enough brush. And then I want to increase my brush head because I want it to be a very good sweep. Okay, so I'm just going to do this so you get a very smooth um, effect. And then I want to get rid of the hand. It looks a little bit awkward to show that. So I'm just going to gradually clean that off like so. I'm going to do the same thing along this side. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see. So the first thing I like to do when I bring in a subject is to go to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. And I want to lighten up my subject a little and increase the contrast and lightness. I'm going to click OK. We are going to go back to our file 
And what I want to do, I'm going to drag the circle into a working file. I'm going to release and I'm going to set it right there. And I'm going to scale it down just a little. So I'm going to scale this down just a little bit more. I'm going to take it up just like that. I'm going to scale it down a little more. Then I'm going to set it right there. And then what I want to do, I want to change the color of this. So I'm going to go to image adjustment and I'm going to go to hue. And the easiest way to do this is take your lightness all the way down. So as you can see, it just changes it. It takes out the color saturation. And so you basically have a black and white. And I'm going to click OK. And then we want to add a gradient effect. So with my background selected, I'm going to click on the adjustment layers and I'm going to choose gradient. And then you see that my gradient is from opacity to transparent. I'm going to double click on the color and then we're going to change that. We're going to make that black. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other end. I'm going to choose the black and I'm going to click OK and click OK and then close it off. So this is what we have so far. The next thing that I'm going to bring in is um, another file which will give us some sparkle. So I'm going to drag this layer into our working file. I'm going to set it down here and I'm going to scale it. I'm going to scale it a little bit more. I'm going to pull it up just a little bit more. So we have this effect on the bottom. So the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to type in some few text. So I'm going to start with the main text in the middle. And what I'm going to do, so I'm going to type in birthday. And then I'm going to scale this. And I'm going to set it somewhere here. I'm going to rescale. And I'm going to put it on top like that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to select and I'm going to make this black for, for now. And then I'm going to add an image to this. But before we do that, we want to right click and go to our blending options. And then we're going to add four different styles to this text. We're going to add a beveled edge. And then we're going to add a contour. Then we are going to add 13 and we are going to add an outer glow. And as you can see, if I click on my bevel, you see that I have my style at outer bevel, my technique at chisel soft, and then my depth you see is at 67. Size is around 24. Softness is around four. I've left my angle at 90. And then you can see my gross contour is this design. My opacity, as you go down, you see that I have a 90 and I have a 66. If I go to my contour, you see that my range is at zero. And this is my contour design. If I come to sateen, I chose honey mustard gold because of the whole theme that I'm going with. And then the size I have at 114. And then distance is at 87. And then under glow, I have my blend mode is at normal opacity at 90. And then I have my noise at zero. My spread for my element is at 90, 29. Technique is at softener. And then my size is at seven. I'm going to close this. And then I'm going to add an image to our text and in previous tutorials I've shown you how to actually apply or clip an image onto a text and we're going to do the same thing so I'm going to bring in this image I'm going to drop it into a file and I'm going to rescale it to the size of my text I'm going to set it right there I'm going to double click and then I'm going to hold down my alt and clip my text onto my image. So you can see if I zoom in, you see the effect right now. 
So I'm going to right click again, go back to my blending options, and then I'm going to, oh, make sure I'm on the right layer, go to blending options, and then in my sateen, you can begin to play around with it. So you see that your text begins to get a different effect that is showing up on it. So this is all preference. So whatever you want to show a little bit of texture on your on your um, image, you go to the sateen and it allows you to do that. And you can see a preview right there. So I'm going to take this up just a little bit more like that. I'm going to click actually like the way it looked before. I'm now going to go back to my folder and we want to bring in this spotlight. I'm going to set it right there and I'm going to change the blend mode. I'm going to take that to screen and in screen you see that it takes away the black background and you only see the light itself. So I'm going to set that right here. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to scale this just a little by holding down my shift. I want to stretch it and I'm going to move it right there. I'm going to stretch it just a little. So I'm going to move this text up. Notice that we cannot see our image because it still looks like it's being clipped. So what you want to do is to unclip it. So now we can see it. And I'm going to move this right on top of my text. And you can see that there's a little line around it. So we're going to take our eraser tool, making sure I'm on the right layer with my eraser tool. I'm going to take down my eraser head just a little. And we are just going to clean around this area. So you don't see the outline. The light is the only thing that shines through. And then you can duplicate this so you get a more bigger shine. I'm going to click on both. And then I'm going to make a duplicate of both. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to select both lights. And I'm going to set it right there like that. And as you can see, there's a little line showing up here. So I have to clean it off. So I'm going to click on the top layer with my eraser tool. I'm going to clean it. I'm going to do the same thing for this other one. So if I zoom out, you see that I have my light and it looks really good. So the next thing that we want to do is to bring in other elements. So, and I'm going to select that and I'm going to change the color, the font style. And I'm going to rescale this and I'm going to change the color. I'm going to go for a rich red. I'm going to highlight and then increase, make it a little bit more deeper in terms of the color. So from here, we're going to click on our text, right click, go to blend and options. And then we want to add a bevel. We want to add a contour. We want to add a stroke and we want to add a shadow. So if I click on bevel, you can see that my style is at my style is in a bevel, my technique is on smooth, and you can see my depth is at 100, size 18, softness is at zero. If you look down here, my high light mode is on screen, opacity at 50, shadow mode is multiply, opacity at 50. And the contour, you want to take your range all the way to 100, and then on the stroke, your size can be 4 and your opacity can be 100. Notice that my position is outside and my blend mode is normal. When you come to the drop down shadow, you can do whatever you want, but I wanted to give it, keep it on the minimal. 
so i kept my blend mode normal opacity 100 my spread and distance and size i kept it very small so it all depends on what you want but this is what i chose to do so i'm gonna click ok and now that we have this effect i'm going to rotate this i'm gonna rotate this a little and i'm going to set this somewhere here i'm gonna move it in a little and i'm gonna make a duplicate of this and then i'm going to add my zero so we are celebrating a 30th birthday so i'm going to set my zero up like that and now i'm going to add a little text I'm going to change that to white. I'm going to scale this down just a little. Double click. And I'm going to move. I'm going to rescale. And I'm going to move this and set it right there. I'm going to rescale it. And that's it. So you can play with it. You can add a shadow if you want to, even that. But I wanted to leave that plain. I didn't want to do too much with that. Now that we have this set, we're going to go back to our folder and I am going to bring in this confetti. So we are going to click and drop it right there. I'm going to set it somewhere here and we are going to scale it a little. We're going to move the circle down. So it's beneath the confetti. So we have the confetti on top of it. So now that we have this set, it looks really good. And one thing that I will urge you to do is always save your project. So we're going to save this so that you're in a habit of saving your files. I'm just going to look for my folder and I'm going to save it here as birthday. I'm going to type in my next text. So I'm going to click and then just type in the word bash i'm going to highlight and change that to white and i'm going to change this font so this font is the tw send mt condensed so just so you know in case you want to use it so i'm going to set it right there so with our font sets i'm going to hold down my shift i want to reduce this a little I'm going to select my font. I'm going to pull it down. So now that we have our font, we want to put a gold background around it. So I'm going to pick my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to just create a rectangle around my text. I'm going to add a new layer and then I'm going to make sure that I pick the goldish color that I want. I'm going to pick something like this. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to pick my bucket and I'm going to apply that. I'm going to press Ctrl D to deselect. I'm going to move this beneath my text. Hold down my Ctrl and then click on my text. It's going to make a selection around my text for me. I'm going to click on the layer beneath and I'm going to write, I'm going to take my eraser and then I'm going to erase between my text. I'm going to turn off this text so we can see it. I'm going to press Ctrl D. So the next thing you want to do to make your to make your plaque pop a little bit more is to add a metallic image to it. So we're going to go back to our folder and I'm going to drag in the metallic image that I used before. I'm going to rescale so it fits on this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring that beneath and I'm going to click that to our image. So you can see that it gives it a different effect. I'm going to click on both the image and my rectangle and I'm going to set it somewhere here. We are going to move this beneath our birthday. So we have this look. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to click on my image, go to image adjustment brightness, and I'm going to increase that 
just a little and I'm going to click OK. So now that we have this, what I'm going to do next is to add a little bit of um, almost like a spotlight on my metallic plaque. So I'm going to add a new layer right on top. So we're going to pick up our brush and I'm going to increase this, my brush head just a little. And I'm going to create a dab on this side and I'm also going to create a dab somewhere here. I'm going to increase that, increase that. So we get this glow on the plaque. And then what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to select my, my plaque. I'm going to press Control, hold it down, select it. And then I want to do the inverse for a reason. So I'm going to go to Select and then choose inverse. So with my eraser tool and the layer that I just created for the spotlight selected, I'm going to erase around my, um, my plaque and then I'm going to press Control D. So now you can see that there is a little bit of a, we are going to click on this, our text tool and we are going to add exclusive Reduce the scale. I'm going to change the font style. We're going to choose the geometry four, and then we're going to rescale this. We're going to take it down, and we're going to set it right there. With my up arrow, I'm going to move this up a little, and then we're going to scale it down a little bit more, and then. I'm going to zoom in so we can see. We're going to recenter. I'm going to pull it down a little. So the last thing that we want to do, I'm going to pull it down. And then I'm going to move this all the way up and set it right there. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to right click, go to blending options, and we're going to add a white shadow. So I'm just going to increase that and then we're going to fix this. Then I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to zoom out. It's looking good so far. So we just have a few more things to add. We're going to add the date. So I'm going to select my text tool and I'm going to type in And then I'm going to make that red. So you can see I'm adding splashes of the red here, here and there. Um, I'm going to take this down just a little. Then we're going to recenter it. So the last thing we're going to do is to add the, the location where the event is going to take place. But before I do that, I want to add something small around the time and the date. So I'm going to select my lasso tool. Make sure your foreground is white. We're going to zoom in and we are going to create a new layer. And then with your lasso tool selected, we are going to just hold down our shift to draw a straight line and then release it and then we are basically trying to eyeball a rectangle. And then we are going to use our paint bucket. We're gonna fill that in, Control D to deselect. And then you wanna to go to your fill. You wanna to go to Blair, Gaussian Blair, and you can take the Blair effect up or down, depending on what suits you. I'm going to click OK. I have it at 6.4. I'm going to click OK. I like the way it looks. I want to move it up just a little to center it. I'm going to click on it again and then I'm going to make a duplicate. Move it this way. Go to Edit, Transform and then flip horizontal. It flips the other way for you. And then you can set it right there. And then when you zoom out, you see that it gives it a very cool effect. The last thing we're going to do to complete our 
supplier is to add the location. So I'm going to click on the text tool and I'm going to reduce the font style. This is too big. And then we're going to type in our address. So now that we have our address, I'm going to move that and set it right here. And as you can see, it's beneath our confetti. So we're going to move that layer all the way up. So it's on top. And then I'm going to select this layer. You can leave this text if you want, or you can change and set it right there. And I'm, I have to warn you, this address is no good. Don't even try to Google this because there's nowhere in New York that is a thousand Oaks Drive. Okay, so this is just a fake address and there is no party. I wish there was. <laughs> so I'm going to move this up just a little and we're going to zoom out so we can see everything that we have done. And I think this looks really good. You know, um, just pulling in few elements. And like I always say, you can tweak it and make it your own, you know, design. So with this set, the last thing that I like to do, which I have been teaching you guys to do, is to use the camera roll effect to finish off your design. So we're going to select all our layers and we are going to click on our group icon to group everything. So now that we have everything grouped, we want to click on our group layer and then you want to press shift control alt E holding all down and then Photoshop will generate a final image for you. We are going to turn this layer off and we are going to go to filter camera raw and then here we get to play around with this a little. So I'm taking down the exposure and then I'm going to increase the highlights just a little. And then we're going to go to the vibrance. We want to pull out the color saturation. And then this, we want to increase the saturation just a little. Then we're taking up the black or we can reduce it. I want to take it up just a little and then I'm going to click OK. So here, if I click on that, you can see this is the before and this is the after. So this again is all preference. If you like it like this, which is also good, that's fine. But if you want a little bit more of a punch effect, you can also go for something like this. I hope you found this tutorial very fun and interesting. Please do like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for all future uploads. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.